You just got blast and you're trying to figure out what are the first metrics you should look at and train around. Today we're gonna to go over our first swing metric and impact metric that you should focus on and get going. In our previous video, we went over that blast has swing metrics, which measure the coordination control pattern of the athlete, or essentially how they move. We also have impact metrics that let us know what's going on with the bat and the body at contact. We're gonna go ahead and dive into the first two. The first swing metric that you wanna focus on is early connection. This is the starting point of my swing after I load. It's measuring the relationship between my body tilt and vertical bat angle as the bat transitions from load into rotation. In simple terms, that's after the hitter loads and begins their fire, swing start, whatever you like to call it, we're looking at the relationship or the starting point of your swing. We want this to be roughly 90 degrees or the ideal range that you see on the screen. The early connection angle is measured as you see on the screen. If that number is significantly greater than 90, it'll look like this. If the number is significantly less than 90, your angle will look like this. It's important to understand what your early connection is, both on an average and what your range is. Imagine trying to start something and having a different starting point each time. The ball or the pitch that you're trying to hit is always moving and it will never be consistent. So as a hitter, we're trying to be as consistent as we can. Early connection is the starting point in your swing. Now, it's important to call out that hitters have their own stance, style, and rhythm. We don't care what you do in your load or your timing. Whatever works best for you as a hitter or your players is what you should do. But the starting point after your load of your swing should be consistent, and that's your early connection. Now that we know what early connection is and why it's so important, it's time for us to go ahead and take some swings so that you can see where you fall with early connection. We recommend taking about 40 to 50 swings so that you have a good data set. Now, we're gonna show you how to view those swings in the app and in Blast Connect with our data. Let's start with the app. Head to the screen where you can see your early connection scores and the swings that you've taken. You'll see that you have an average, a low, and a high of where you fall. You'll also see you have a nice graph at the top to see how much your range changes. Now, it's important to look at the average because you wanna know on average what's your early connection. In this example, it looks pretty good. It's pretty close to 90 and right in our ideal range. But if we look at the low and high, you can see that our early connection varies swing to swing pretty significantly. We have some that are significantly above the ideal range and some that are significantly below the ideal range. So on average, this hitter ends up having a good early connection. But some swings he's very high, some swings he's very low, indicating that his starting point in the swing is different from swing to swing. So even though his average is high, in this example, we wanna tighten that hitter up so that he has a more consistent early connection or the starting point of the swing. Now, let's look at some data in Blast Connect. We'll look at a different hitter this time so that we have another example to go off of. We'll log into Blast Connect and go to the part where we can see our early connection data. Now, this hitter has the same average, which is right in the ideal range, just like hitter one. But when we look at the graph, we see that their range is much tighter. All of their swings fall in the ideal range, or their early connection is much more consistent swing to swing. This is super important because the hitter's starting point after they load is consistent. The ball is always going to change, so the hitter wants to be consistent. This hitter's average is good and their range is good. We're gonna take a look at our first impact metric that you should focus on, and that's attack angle. Attack angle lets us know am I swinging up, down, or level, and to what degree at the point of impact. In an ideal world, the hitter wants to match the incoming pitch so that they have the biggest window to hit the ball as it's in the hitting zone. If the ball comes down negative or downwards towards the hitter, we wanna match that with our bat so we have the biggest window to hit. Let's take a look at an image. Both of these hitters, using our 3D swing tracer, are moving towards the ball. You can see that one hitter is matching their attack angle to the incoming pitch. The other hitter is swinging down and has a smaller window to hit the ball as it's in the hitting zone. Go ahead, just like we did for early connection, and take a look at your 40 to 50 swings and where your attack angle is. We'll do the same thing here, where we'll check in the app to see what our average is and what the ranges are. We can do the same thing in Blast Connect so we can see what our ranges are and what the averages are. The great thing about Blast Connect is you can view that data as the coach or the player or the parent when you're not there. The swings get uploaded and you can view that data. Now we know which two metrics to start with. We gave you a swing metric, early connection, and an impact metric, attack angle, to focus on and train around first. It's important to understand these metrics and train around them into the ideal ranges before you move on to some other ones. Keep watching some of our other episodes where we'll dive into more of the metrics, how to train around them, and specific drills to improve.